Mary and Jones won a record-breaking five track and field medals at the 2000 Olympics. But her story was overshadowed by the crimes that came to light after. It turns out, her journey to get to the Olympics was pretty eventful, too. Mary and Jones's mother and father divorced when she was very young. She was still a kid when her mom remarried to a man named Ira Toller. While Jones's mom worked as a secretary at a law firm, Toller took care of Jones and her half-brother, Albert Kelly. Jones grew close to Toller, who, because her mother was also named Marion, nicknamed her Little Marion. Kelly told Sports Illustrated, Ira was always there for my sister, then he was gone. Toller died of a stroke in 1987 when Jones was 11 years old. The following year, she began to develop an interest in track and field after watching Florence Griffith Joyner's amazing performance at the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul. And that summer I wrote on my chalkboard that I was going to be an Olympic champion. Jones coped with her grief by throwing herself wholeheartedly into the sport. That dedication paid off. By the time she was in high school, she was a top competitor, and her coach began to believe she could have a future as an Olympian. Jones began competing in national track and field competitions when she was just 12 years old. While proving to be a prodigy as an athlete, she was a challenging daughter. Her mother told Sports Illustrated, I knew that she would defy me, test me, and there were many rebellions. Jones's mother recognized that it was that same rebellious nature that made her daughter such a fierce competitor. The elder Marion tried to figure out how to teach the young athlete to harness those feelings in service of her athletic pursuits. She explained, I decided that she was special, that I had to find a way to nurture these qualities, not beat them out of her. That strategy seemed to work. By the time Jones made it to high school, she was performing at a level far beyond the rest of her peers. She won numerous national competitions as a sophomore in the 100, 200, and 400 meter races. When she was a junior, she posted a time of 22.58 in the 200 meters, setting a U.S. high school national record. As Marion Jones was burning up the track, she was also demonstrating some serious skill on the basketball court. She led her high school, Thousand Oaks High, to two regional championships. In 1993, her talent was recognized when she won California's Division I Player of the Year award. Jones even went to the University of North Carolina on a basketball scholarship. Jones helped the UNC women's basketball team take the national title in 1994. Jones's phenom status in both track and basketball did not get unnoticed. She was the subject of a brief item in a 1995 edition of the New York Times detailing her dual athletic pursuits. The article noted, she is happy that she is playing basketball in the winter and running track in the spring and summer. And if you think she is ruining a world-class career as a sprinter by spending the winter as a starting point guard, that's your problem. Jones was seen as a serious contender for the 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona. As the New York Times reported at the time, the then 16-year-old was seen as possibly the greatest high school runner in history and a likely champion to bring home some gold medals. So why didn't she compete? Jones, along with her mother and her high school track coach, wanted to focus on her studies and finish high school before being drawn into a world of six-figure endorsement deals and high-stakes pressure. The risk, of course, was that the opportunity to compete on behalf of the U.S. might not come around again in four years. Jones was willing to take it. A rumor also began swirling that she might compete for Belize, where her mother was born instead of the United States. When Olympic coach Sue Humphrey heard about that possibility, she told the Times that there would always be a spot awaiting Jones on the American team, calling her our future. After skipping the 1992 Olympics, Jones cast her eye on the 1996 Games in Atlanta. During the four-year gap between the two, Jones dedicated herself to relentless training to be ready for what she knew would be her toughest and most nerve-wracking competition. As it turned out, though, she did not compete in Atlanta, and this time, the decision was not hers. Jones wound up breaking a bone in her left foot and then breaking it again when she didn't give herself enough time to fully recover. As a result, she was unable to try out for a spot on the U.S. women's track team. That broken bone proved to be a huge setback. She was forced to set out the entirety of the 1996 track and field season when she broke the bone the second time. I know I've been blessed with an enormous amount of physical talent, yeah. um, and I've had some struggles along the way. Jones was recuperating from her injuries when she met C.J. Hunter, a shot putter and coach at the University of North Carolina. Jones's relationship with Hunter raised eyebrows. Not only was Hunter seven years older than her, but he was also working under Jones's coach, Dennis Craddock. 
university regulations strictly prohibited coaches from dating the students. Instead of breaking off the relationship, Hunter offered to resign. He told Sports Illustrated it was an easy call. The relationship progressed quickly, and the two got engaged. Sylvia Hatchell, Jones's college basketball coach, voiced some concern, telling Sports Illustrated, There are a lot of people who care about Marion who feel that CJ is not good for her. The publication noted that Hunter was a divorced father of two children and had previously filed for bankruptcy. But Hunter also had his supporters. Former UNC associate athletic director Jeff Madden, who introduced the two, insisted that Hunter was misunderstood, telling Sports Illustrated, People are intimidated by him because he's blunt. Jones and Hunter married in 1998, but they divorced in 2002. Hunter died in 2021 at age 52. With her sights set on the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney, Marion Jones set an audacious goal. By the time she set foot on Australian soil, she intended to be the fastest female runner in the world. Jones told the New York Times in 1997 that she believed if she continued training, she would eventually be able to break the world record set by Florence Griffith Joyner for the 100 and 200 meter races. But she knew it would take some time. She said, specifically of the 100 meter record, it will definitely stand for a couple more years. I hope I'm the person who can break it. It would have to be a perfect day, a perfect race, but I feel I can be that person. Jones said that she knew she couldn't keep competing forever, but said she wanted to keep going for several more years. She added, I want to achieve the things I've dreamed all my life. I want to be world champion, an Olympic gold medalist, and a world record holder. As she trained for the 2000 Olympics, Jones began working with coach Trevor Graham, who had devoted himself to reading manuals on running technique and working with top athletes, and to put all the information into practice. Graham told Sports Illustrated, Here I'm getting all this knowledge, and I just needed a great sprinter so I could teach it. When Graham first watched Jones training, he took the initiative to offer her some advice, a minor adjustment to her running technique. The results were immediate, Jones said, it was like automatic results. That had never happened to me. As she continued to work with Graham, commentators began to predict that Jones was the next big female track star. Former Olympian athlete Jackie Joyner Kersey told Sports Illustrated, I don't know what she can't do. She's gifted and she's mentally tough. She can own everything from the 400 on down, plus the long jump. Jones was hitting her stride when she headed to New York to compete in the 1998 Goodwill Games. As the New York Times reported, she easily dominated the women's sprinting events. Her time in the 200 meters was the fastest of any runner that year. I'm just excited to come here and beat the competition handily like I did. The Associated Press noted some details that made her dominant performance even more impressive. For one, Jones had to restart the 100-meter race after a false start, which is something that would easily rattle any athlete. She was also running into a 2-mile-per-hour headwind and yet she managed a time of 10.90 seconds, which marked the eighth consecutive running of that race in which she came in under 11 seconds, something that no other sprinter had ever managed to do more than six times in a row. In 1999, Marion Jones was the woman to beat at the track and field world championships in Seville, Spain. Jones had been dominating the sport for some time, and expectations were high that this could be her finest performance yet. But the New York Times reported that Jones's usual aura of invincibility was pierced when, mere seconds into the race, she doubled over in pain. Doctors rushed in to attend to what appeared to be spasms in her back. Fans were stunned, as were her fellow athletes. Australian sprinter Nova Paris Kneebone told the Associated Press, In my eyes, she's the wonder woman of track and field. She's gained so much respect. Jones was not only forced to pull out of the World Championships, but also wound up sitting out the remainder of the season. Even so, Jones was nonetheless looking ahead to 2000. Her agent, Charlie Wells, told the Tampa Bay Times she was confident that not only would she compete in Sydney, but was gunning to win a record-breaking five medals, which she did. In 2007, Jones's success all came crashing down when she confessed to taking steroids. The International Olympic Committee stripped her of all her medals. She was also in dire straits financially. A bank foreclosed on her home the same year. Jones was hit with charges of lying to federal agents about her steroid use, and also admitted to lying about her knowledge of a check-forging scheme involving her former sports agent. She was sentenced to serve six months in prison and was released in September 2008. I have almost become like the poster child. <laughs> 
for, for poor decisions that athletes make. <laughs> In 2010, Jones returned to basketball, signing with the WNBA's Tulsa Shock. Her new basketball gig was seen by some as seeking redemption, but she took a contrary view. The New York Times quoted her as saying in a news conference, Redemption isn't a part of my vocabulary. The following year, she was cut from the team.